morning, everybody out there in internet land. And for you, it may be afternoon, evening, middle of the night. In any case, welcome to the IPFS Documentation and Developer UX Working Group. This is our weekly meeting. Today is Monday, the 21st of October, 2019. You can follow along in the notes or get more information about what we are doing in our GitHub repo. All the info is in the readme, and that is github.com slash IPFS slash docs. Um, I am Jessica, your official and unofficial host for the week, and we have um, today our, our before he's even started, which is awesome, our new um, technical content strategist, uh, John Matthews from, are you, are you in Toronto right now? Where are you? Uh, yeah, I'm currently in Toronto in uh, the Aeon offices, um, so I've just kind of like booked out a room the next half an hour. Um, but yeah, it's uh, currently in Toronto, it's getting cold, so winter's coming, which is lovely. Ah, all right, all right. Well, welcome. Um, for, for your benefit and for the benefit of anybody else who may be dropping in on this meeting, um, basically what we do in, in these Monday check-ins is run down all of our OKRs um, and comment on those, show and tell things as they're applicable. Um, this, is, this is our main public check-in. So unless anybody has any questions. Um, yeah, let's, let's go ahead and get started. Um, Docs, beta, launch. Chris, I left you there in the highlighting, but do you want to hear? I'll, I'll talk about the other two points if you want to type frantically for a moment. Um, <laughs> or I could fill in the notes afterwards. All right, sounds good. <laughs> Retroactively. Let's, let's just roll through. Yes. Um, uh, but yeah, I'd say last week um, we made some good progress on, uh, I would say more on the semantic structuring and making sure that we are uh, all on the same page with how we're going to lay things out. Um, so a lot of effort was put into um, the content structure and the individual uh, pages. And Jessica booted up a, a ViewPress doc um, app, which is essentially just to visualize what we are, um, how, we, how we're building out the, the site nav. Um, uh, so that's allowed us to, to to get ahead with some prototyping on the individual um, areas that we're going to segment out. So we've got a workflowy document that we've been uh, using as the main content site nav, um, and now we're breaking that down into individual subsections that will essentially form the top tier navigation. Um, so we have a that prototype build that we're using uh, as the, uh, the sort of the, the working um, example for layout and structure. And then uh, I'm constructing and finalizing some of the uh, the actual build that will be uh, used as the main uh, proof of concept. Um, so I would say this week is, is the main aim is to basically merge those two uh, forces together and then combine so that we've got the opportunity to migrate some of the content across. And um, that combined with the, the setup of the CLI and all the deployment, then we'll um, essentially have a, our first prototype level uh, out to public. Um, we, we also had some conversations around the, uh, what, uh, what our aims are in terms of a roadmap for our initial release of this. So um, we are, were aiming uh, quite aggressively towards lab week to actually have a full uh, version of this um, live and ready to play with. Um, uh, lab week for anyone externally was watching is essentially our, our internal summit for our, for, our, for our protocol lab. So we're all getting together then. So we'll have a lot of our um, uh, staff on the ground that we can all actually work on, uh, work with and play with the, the product um, in face, face to face. Um, so that will be a good opportunity for us to do initial user testing and feedback with everybody um, uh, yeah, in person. And so that's the main aim. We've got a, uh, an issue, I'll link to it in the doc, but uh, we've got a milestone basically, which is breaking out all the individual uh, tasks that we require to complete before that date. So um, that'll be the case to watch while we go through those. Um, let me go back to the box. Uh, yes, okay. I think that's everything for this week. Um, thank you very much for filling in the notes there as I've been rambling away. Um, yeah, I'll pass it over to... Quick question. Um, I, will, I will hit the ground running as hard as I can with at least sort of migrating some of the menu stuff over as soon as mm -hmm. that's sitting in a in a repo that is ideally public but definitely something that this core team has access to when do you think you might be able to open that up for us 
um it's very soon <laughs> uh, yeah i don't want to put a date on it exactly but yeah well um let's make sure that we've got something that we can both work towards um i, I want i want to make sure it's ready this week so we can actually start migrating the content because otherwise we'll we'll duplicate effort and that's um it's not an ideal situation so um, yeah I'm fragmenting by trying out two different themes. There's, there's a way, there's an approach to essentially extend a, a base theme that we can, I don't want to have to uh, fork the, the individual themes that we end up having to maintain it ourselves. Ideally, if I can extend the base theme and work upon that, then uh, we'll have um, better options for updating. Um, and that requires like two different structures to, to set it up. Um, so I don't want to break it in the meantime. Um, but okay. uh, yeah, any other questions? Um, in the meantime. Um, Eric, do you want to talk through um, the Nothing to See Here page since that's your baby and it looks awesome? Sure, we tweaked it. Um, we, we threw that in front of uh, people as well uh, as the other smattering of stuff that we had them look at uh, the other day. Mostly the uh, information architecture business navigation structure and I can share my screen and show how it looks now if I can find it in the tabby jungle I don't want to pre-share <laughs> show all the and we'll talk a little bit about the user testing um, in a minute as well we get to user test a bunch, bunch of stuff yeah Oh Lord, do it this way. We, we can walk through that no, no. if you want to pull up until we get to the user testing part. Here, you keep doing your tabs, I'll keep moving. Oh, you got it. Yep, yeah, so. Fun little uh, consolation prize for people who are disappointed by not finding the content that they expected of a illustration of someone frantically working on the content um, as uh, and in the little status bar we've gone over this before but we moved the uh, we moved these these buttons up um, to try and get feedback on how important people feel the content is and we can hopefully strategize uh, you know prioritize based on what people click oh this is extremely important everyone really wants this so let's bump that up in the priority uh, and did some just some simple tweaks to copy you know help us write this you know just really um call to action oriented right from the get-go lend us a hand on github very friendly hopefully but we have someone who uh is quite uh, quite good at the at the words from what i hear now uh soon to be now in our midst but soon to be officially in our midst so we are not yet pushing this live. Uh, and of course, feel free to, John, to feedback um, on the issue. Yep. Yeah, yeah, cool. Uh, is this like a landing page for documents that haven't yet been completed then? Is that the purpose of this? Yeah. Yeah. Okay, so cool, cool. Basically, yeah. basically as we, as we, um, so we did this information architecture exercise um, to fix the nav structure for the beta site. And um, as we did that, we built in affordances for a bunch of content that doesn't exist yet so that we could test on, you know, getting that non-existent content into the nav. So what that does mean is that on the beta site, there's going to be a handful of pages that just say nothing here yet. Um, cool. So we just wanted we wanted a good elegant solution for that right off the bat, but then also something that we that gives us an affordance to to even like gauge interest. Um, you know, if we that, that even gives us the chance if we wanted to be super sneaky um, to demo new topics and just see who clicks on them too. So yeah. Cool. Yeah, and no, I like that. It's a it's a really cool idea. I especially like the status bar as well that shows like how it's progressing on GitHub and stuff. That's really cool. Yeah, and unfortunately, we haven't figured out a way to make that automatic. Um, since we're dealing in the in the initial beta migration of like a dozen pieces of content, we decided that we would just do it by hand because it wasn't worth the effort. Um, but if if we end up using this a lot, we might want to come up with a better solution. Of course, the most elegant solution is that this page doesn't exist because there's no need for it. <laughs> Chris? That's it. If you write all the documentation at light speed, then we'll never need <laughs> status bars. Um, but okay, actually, cool. join yet? Don't scare them. <laughs> <off. laughs> 
<laughs> no, um, as, yeah, we're actually trying to give you a helping hand as well by uh, just going to uh, slide into our metric story. So we're going to have some tracking on there to say like, oh, I'm interested in this. So basically on some um, passive voting. So we'll be able to do a poll each week and see what pieces of content that most people are, are looking for. So it'll give us a list, a rough prioritization list. And so it should it should help us with that. And there's one other one other note, um, like that particular GitHub issue, which is uh, oh, I don't even remember. Uh, I I don't remember what the GitHub. Is. I I didn't never check it. Three two. Uh, anyway, I moved that into blocked in our Zen Hub, and it occurred to me that we're going to be in this sort of weird space for like the next sort of month and a half or so, where I'm like moving a ton of issues into blocked, and and ideally we're all moving issues into blocked because we're doing a little bit of our own project management. Um, and that's just because we're not ready to build them out yet. Um, I know block looks awfully negative, but it's also truthful in this case. So so take take that block designation with a little bit of salt, um, but also just a good idea of sort of you know, where our dependencies lie. So um, and that brings us to another thing we, we ha we're not going to be moving all that much on in the, in the super near future is um, the next um, the next OKR, which is legacy docs deprecation plan. Um, you know, we're all taking notes on this. I know we're all taking notes on this. We're not really accumulating anything so far. We'll be adding them as we go while we build and spec out the site. So not a lot of progress on that as, as expected. Um, third on down, metrics definition and collection for beta site. As Chris said, we're sort of holding off on this until, John, like you get in, sort of settled in and get a little bit more of the lay of the land. And as we start, um, as, as we continue to build things and we're a little further on the site definition. Um, Recurring item. Oh, did you have a hand? Just Josh Stein. No, it's just me. Just, yeah. All right. <laughs> cool. All right. Um, recurring item, beta site, is this helpful feedback mechanism? Um, visuals for this are done in 305. And again, that's one of those things that's, that's blocked until in 306 until the beta site's a little bit further along and we're ready to actually build that in there. Um, I also pushed a PR on Friday, 356, that um, takes two things out of this and puts it in the legacy site that moves the edit and GitHub link up to the feedback buttons like we've talked about. And then also in that text links adds um, another link that says open an issue and that populates an automatic issue in the docs repo with the page title and the subject of the issue. Eric, I just saw your notes about taking a screenshot of that. I could be really snarky and I could be just like, Put the site up on your local, but I'll, I'll take a screenshot for you. Right. We should, I, mostly that's because I would love that to be just the habit. It, it's way faster for reviews and it, and it doesn't require the community to also install. Yeah. And, yeah. and thirdly, my local machine's effed up. Oh, sorry. All right. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I had, I didn't take a screenshot in that case because it was super, super simple. It didn't involve a whole lot of visual implementation, but yeah, you're totally right. Um, sorry, Chris and Terry. I'll show you one sneaky trick, whereas if you expand the uh, metadata at the bottom, you'll be able to view the site live in real time. What? Um, yeah, there's a, oh, let me show you very quickly. Uh, That's what Terry was going to say too, I think. No, it's not. Oh. <laughs> um, I ju it's just a thing I know exists on some of our sites. Yeah, yeah. So we've, we've got the CI, the GitHub Actions, baked into uh, into this. So essentially, you expand this area in the reviewers, and then you go to the IPFS um, website added, and then you can you can view that as it, as it would be. There you go, Eric. Essentially, so it allows you to just preview and test it out. Um, if I and for any external them, contributors, if you wish to know, that's that's the one right. to play around with. <laughs> this the thing I was going to mention is different. Just a I saw a version of this that I liked recently, which is I was on the um, where uh, I liked just the addition of this, like adding something to edit this page on GitHub, like proud mistake, want to contribute. I enjoyed that little that's, bonus that's on the view site that I saw. No, that's a good way of wording that. Do you mind taking a screenshot of that and throwing it in? Sure. In 306? Sure. Thank you. Cool, cool. Um, cool. And then I might, I might revise that PR, but um, um, Eric, is, that, is, is Chris's one weird trick good enough that I, that I can bypass screenshotting for now? Sure, I'll do the screenshot. 
Oh, I'll do the screenshot. Don't worry about it. It right. is nice for, uh, for, for like archiving purposes if people just want to stumble across it because those branches won't live um, necessarily for everything. That's true. No, that's true. Cool. <clears throat> All right. Usability testing. Um, this was actually incredibly helpful. We weren't real sure what we were getting ourselves into, and it turned out to be pretty fantastic. I can go into details. Do you want to do it, Eric? Um, why don't you go for it? Because I'm parallel processing okay. by oh, looking yeah. at that. Sure, sure. Um, so we were we were in Boulder, Colorado, for a full day of testing at a local co-working space in exchange for coffee and swag um, and. And it was very, very ad hoc testing. If you click on the link to the GitHub issue in the in the meeting notes, um, that'll give you all of the information that you need, including recommendations. Um, but it was wonderful because it was sort of one of these things where we had no idea who we were even going to get in this conversation because um, this was the day part of an evening event that was like IPFS basics night. Um, so there were people who had all different areas of expertise. Um, Colorado has been like informally called Cryptorado for like the last year or so. So we had a whole lot of people who were like super into cryptocurrencies. Um, so who had a lot of interesting, interesting knowledge, but not necessarily um, IPFS related knowledge, but a lot of a lot of background info. So that was really interesting to sort of get their feedbacks. Um, we also had somebody who was doing an archival project um, for an un unusual organization that had some pretty specific needs. So we got to flight test. Um, the archivist persona on her and it turned out that that actually panned out like even better than we thought archivist was one of the sort of less researched ones because I, I based this on a lot of knowledge I got from DPLA fest in Chicago in April um, and it turned out to check out really well which was pretty sweet um, also re really really helped us pin down the now structure um, in the, the that's in that sort of like like fake repo big view press repo that I made in reference to Bob. Um, it, 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 it feels like, you know, Eric still has a couple of review bits that he wants to make, but it, but it sounds like we're at a point where we can throw this out in front of people um, without too much worry, and then sort of lump that into the umbrella of launch testing. Um, and then also, as discussed earlier, a lot of really good feedback on the Nothing to See Here page, which enabled us to sort of finish that up, which is great. Um, moving on, recurring items, features voting. Um, I had a long discussion with the, the folks at Canny over the last week or so, and they were kind enough to give us a free account for our open source nature of our work, um, which is super sweet. You should all have admin invites. Um, if you don't, and that feels wrong, hit me up on GitHub and I'll send you a link to do so. Um, John, I'm going to hold off on you for that until you have a protocol email address, just because it's easier that way. Um, there's a link to the public facing voting page, um, docs dash features. So that's more or less done. I took all the features from our prioritized features list and threw them in there as items aside from the ones that like we knew we're, we were going to implement, the ones that are basically like table stakes. Um, the next steps on that is I would, I, my request to all of you all is sometime in the next day or two, look at that public facing voting page that's linked to in the notes. Um, make sure that those items make sense to you, that they're correct. And then we need to figure out the best way to socialize and ship this. I think an item in the, you know, obviously at least an item in the weekly newsletter, probably some social media. Um, and then on the, uh, um, on the front page of the docs repo on the readme. And then also, I don't know, do we want to put something on the legacy site yet? Or do we want to incorporate that into the Beena launch? Yeah, I feel like it belongs more in parallel, just not to confuse people between uh, the association of it. So, um, but th there are ways we can use the API as well to basically embed that a yes. bit nicer into the actual display. Uh, so we'll, you know, we'll see. Well, I think we'll we'll try it first by linking to people, linking it to people, uh, and then um, yeah, if if we get get the usage we want and the feedback, then we can go deeper with integration. Okay. Cool, cool. Um, one note that might. We can look at this after, but it says on the mine admin uh, dashboard that it's only a trial until the first November. Yes, they, so, um, so they're supposed to fix that. Um, they're like, oh, well, we're switching you over. Um, I'll keep an eye on it if the thing tanks. I'll, I'll keep cool. contacting customers. That's okay. Support. That's just just a note. Yeah, yeah. They're like, you should have a free button, and the free button is in there. <laughs> so, so we'll everyone see likes a free button. Exactly. I'll keep an eye on them though. So yeah, um, ecosystem okay. audit. Um, yeah, this is a priority two item. It may not happen. Um, John, if you get super, super like into this idea, it might be something you might be interested in working with Eric on. Um, 
but it's it's basically on hold pending like after lab week because Eric's got a bolo design tasks for that and other things. So, um, content improvement, user driven or legacy. Um, John, for your background, we had split this out into two buckets. Um, content improvements that are suggested by users directly, and then things that we inherited from some very old repos, some dormant repos that are on our backlog. Um, so we separated that up, those out into two buckets. They're tagged in ZenHub accordingly, and we, or sorry, in GitHub accordingly. Um, and I, I can walk you through that later. Of user-driven issues, eight of them are in the Zoom column. Uh, we did push two into review since last week. Um, and then Terry, you and I are talking about clarifying the community section of the docs page on navigation. I saw that you just, I just got a ping, but I didn't read what you said. So we'll keep talking. I just, I just merged my yeah, temporary right. thing. Okay. It's funny that I stumbled across that completely by accident. And I was actually really surprised to find myself in the doc site when looking for that particular information. <laughs> I would have thought it would be on the website, but yeah. You know, yeah. Whatever. yeah. Cool. All right. Um, of the legacy issues, 24 of them are in the icebox, 16 of them are in soon. That has not changed since last week. Um, the blockers on that are just that you know, we, we were doing user testing and working on the beta site all week. Um, it's bandwidth limitation and hopefully, um, you, know, you know, I'm nagging myself as much as I'm nagging anyone. We, we get these done as time permits, but yeah. Terry? Um, sorry, I just wanted to say, as I was in there looking for the community information, I think something that I find confusing about the doc site yeah. is that I envision what's on the left as like a, like the structure that I will then find in the content I'm reading on the right. Yeah. And it's not at all that, and I find, like I find that relationship confusing. Like if I'm in a header of a, some section here, I would expect the next subhead that I see here to be over here as the next thing. So I just, like, the layout of that is very confusing to me as a user yes. right now. And it came out in the community yes. thing. It was like, <laughs> there is content that only exists over here on the side because it's links. Yeah. And so uh, that's definitely a structural thing that is confusing to me personally. That is being, or it's in the list of things to work on. But. That is being super heavy addressed in that docs now okay. issue. Um, and cool. hopefully the result is something that you're going to be a whole lot happier with. Nice. We spun a lot on Friday about um, something, you know, we've, we've got several depths of levels in the nav and just trying to figure out the best way to visually represent that and then also sensibly account for like H2s and individual page content. So hopefully this will be much approved, improved um, and, and we, we will be happy to have you test it when it exists. <laughs> so. Thank you for volunteering. <laughs> um, <laughs> I only tested it by accident. I had no idea how to get there. <laughs> nope, nope. You totally, you totally, um, you know, you echoed what some of the stuff that we heard on Wednesday too. So sweet. It's good that we're on the same page. Um, Recurring item, content close reading, John, this is like your big onboarding test that you can get to know of the docs while also still like providing some value. Um, you're already looking at this a little bit, but we'll talk about it when, when you join, which is cool. Um, Proto school stuff, Terry. Yeah, I feel like Jill is the one accomplishing anything right now. I feel like I'm being pulled in a million directions and not doing as much on the topics that we've attached to this team's work. But uh, Jill, do you want to talk at all about your, your PR? Uh, sorry, my audio cut out for a, a bit. Oh, no worries. Uh, Did you want to tell us about your PR? Sure. So uh, as as with last week, I'm still going through rounds of feedback. Uh, we have some more feedback now, and Alan Shaw also gave us a few clues as well as the vid on what to write on some specific sessions, which we didn't know exactly how to put things uh, in the in the content part. So yeah, it's still a work in progress so far, but I think we can still, we can start to see the light at the end of the tunnel. Yeah, we're getting there, we're getting there. It's, so this, for anyone who missed the context, this is a new Proto School tutorial on the regular files API. I'm very unclear even on what to call it and need like a decision, I think, from Alan on that, but the thing that is not MFS that is used to add and cat and get files um, so there's also a thread going in, I think it's 
in in Slack about the like tips. If anybody has resources for us to add to the resources page, other educational materials, or um, especially things on like why when would you use this over MFS? When would you use this over DAG? I think that Jill and I together did a a reasonable job getting at the basics of that and that people have added a little bit more color in that thread um, and are doing so in the issue. Um, so I went through and copy edited lessons one to three on Friday and hopefully we'll get to four today and then Jill you let me know when the rest of the stuff that you were reworking you feel like is ready for that level of attention and I can do that then. So <laughs> someday when I have time. Um, so this will be, I mean I think we probably with various forms of proofing probably still have a few days a week whatever but um but we're definitely getting close it's really cool oh, cool um we're, oh, yeah. sorry one total side note um for anyone who occasionally pops onto the proto school call that was weekly that's now monthly as a time saving device and uh, more responsive to the level of participation that we have there. I'm trying to cut back on, as much as I can on some of the admin stuff. And we also have some community community focused tasks like resources to help chapter leaders. Molly was kind enough to put together like a intro to IPFS um, slide deck, which I will take a look at soon, Molly. I haven't gotten to that yet. And there's um, an open issue in our organizing repo. If there are other people who would like to be creating resources for chapter leaders specifically, there are some open requests there. Awesome. Uh, we are running low on time. Anybody else with anything outstanding? Um, Molly, I see you, you, you've been sitting in on the meeting. Do you have any feedback or anything that the team needs to know? Not really. Um, just back from Asia, finally, and uh, trying to catch up on all the things. So um, I watched last week's meeting and don't have any, any major items. Um, I think the one thing is I did loop Chris in with a an email conversation with um, some folks from the ethereum.org website um, who are also using ViewPress for their documentation and an other website and would like to put it on IPFS. So if we can Please. get ViewPress sites automatically deployed to IPFS, that's something that will be usable across other um, things in the ecosystem and, you know, uh, one stone, two birds sort of awesome. scenario. Yeah, we had a we had a quick chat about that just sort of you know ad hoc last week. But um, thank you for bringing that up in the public meeting. That's super helpful. Yeah, some work has already begun on that. Um, Ollie's written a relativization script that I might be able to inherit and uh, use as part of the plugin. And we've got it visually working, but the JavaScript um, migrating all the relative paths in the JS is another piece to entirely. So <laughs> that will be tackled later on. But uh, yeah, we could we I'm confident we'll get there. That's awesome. Thank you. Thanks for the update. Cool, cool. Um, well, to be cognizant of everybody's time, the fact that I believe a lot of us actually have a meeting that we're going to like right now, um, I will wrap this up. Thank you, everybody. Um, John, it was awesome to see you. Thank you for taking the time. No worries. Nice to meet you all. all right. Yeah. Just Looking see forward to seeing more of you soon. soon. See all you right. guys later. Have a wonderful Monday, friends. All right. Bye. Bye.